Hey guys, welcome to a digital plan with me. Excuse the poor lighting, but I really make some good beginner mistakes in this video, so I thought I would just keep it. You know, I'm showing you guys really beginner things like how to import, for example, a printable insert as a digital planner to how to, you know, insert pictures and make them into a sticker or how to use widgets or how to create a habit tracker all within the Good Notes app. Um, so I hope you guys can excuse the lighting and I hope you guys will find this video helpful in some way, shape or form. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm showing you is how to insert a printable as a digital insert basically. And it's super easy. What you do is you just open your PDF file and then you basically take a screenshot and you crop it down to what the insert size should be. Now. Now, most of my inserts come in version one and two from my shop, and I know other shops do it too, where version two is made for like pre-cut paper. So when you open the PDF, it kind of already looks like this. And in that scenario, you would just skip the skip, skip, <laughs> skip the step and basically insert that whole PDF because you don't need to crop it to size because it's already in that size. Okay, so after you've saved it to wherever you want to save it, go back into Good Notes and then hit that little four squares. And then this little arrow allows you to add a page after, you know, whatever your last page was. And then you can go find your saved insert or basically a screenshot. And then now it's basically a digital insert. So it's pretty simple and it saves you a bit of money, especially if you're transitioning or just trying out digital planning and switching over from printables. Um, and yeah, so let's get started with the actual planning. The first thing that I do is I always take a look at my pre-planner. And if you guys have seen my previous videos, you guys will have seen that I'm currently using a Moleskine and it's a dated 18 month planner, I think. So I basically just plan out the events ahead of time there in that weekly. I have a whole bunch of videos on pre-planning and all that stuff that I'll link below. So what I'm doing here is basically using the scribble function, which allows you to convert your handwriting into text automatically. And it's super simple. It's just a toggle you got to switch on in your settings. I'll link some videos below on really simple tutorials or just Google it. It's really easy. But basically the reason why I'm doing this is because I kind of like the experience of handwriting with the Apple Pencil and everything. But I hate my freaking handwriting, which you guys I'm sure know if you guys have seen my previous video. And because I want to print out these digital planners um, and also kind of make them look nice without having to worry about taking a million years to write really neatly, I've just decided this is probably the best of both worlds until I can fix my handwriting or learn how to handwrite properly. Um, so yeah, so I'm just trying out this function and it's so awesome because after you write it, you can like play around with the fonts and with digital planning, of course, you can import a whole bunch of different types of fonts. If you guys want a tutorial on any of these things specifically, just let me know in the comments below on, you know, how to import fonts, how to use scribble, all that stuff, or just Google it and you can find it. <laughs> So one of the first things that I like to do is I just like to add in the dates and I'm just continuing to use that scribble function. One thing that I do notice that I have kind of trouble with is for some reason, unless I'm zoomed in, it's hard for me to move those text boxes like I just did there. Sometimes it ends up scrolling instead of moving the text boxes, which is super annoying, but it might just be because I'm a beginner. And then here I'm just adjusting the sizes because when I first write it, the default size was a lot bigger. You can also set the default sizes. So Google that tip as well if you don't know. And then here what I'm trying to do is the gestures for copy and paste, the three finger gesture. So if you pinch in, it's supposed to copy. And if you, you know, pinch out, it's supposed to paste. But again, I don't know if I'm a beginner or what, but you saw me there have trouble with the pinch in functions. And again here, I'm just not very fluent with it, but you know, I'm sure if you got fluent, it would make things a lot easier. One thing that I figured out as I was doing this is when you paste, like when you're pinching out to paste, it's easier if you tap somewhere and create a text box and then, you know, do the gesture and it'll paste into that text box. I think that's how it works, but let me know down below. So here you'll see that, you know, when I'm going in to type, the default text is a lot bigger because that's how I've set it 
on a day to day when um, I'm usually writing in the planners, I write a little bit bigger. And that's why when I first type, it's bigger and I have to readjust it. Hopefully that makes sense. And how you change that default size is basically using that little button at the top where it's the square with the T. If you hit that, it'll say save as default and then it'll save your size as well as your font type. And then just another little tip that you'll see me do here is that when you write something that you don't like, you can just scribble it out there like I did there instead of having to hit the backspace button. So if you just scribble, then it erases everything without having to use the keyboard. So I'm just doing the same thing and using that same process to fill in the dates for the rest of the week. And then another quick thing that you can do is if you want to move around these little text boxes, instead of using the text box, go up to that lasso function and circle what you want to move and you can easily move everything. And then let's get into the rest of the planning. I'm just filling in the things that I had in my pre-planner and adding them to the days that it should belong to. So you'll see that I kind of give up on the scribble sometimes because I do find it doesn't always recognize my handwriting properly. And so sometimes I convert back to just using the keyboard. I do find it takes a lot longer to use the on-screen keyboard. So my preference is to use like an external keyboard and then just type and you can do it so much faster. But as I'm planning out the week and moving things around, I find it's kind of annoying to jump from keyboard and then trying to use your pencil or finger to try to move things around. So. When I'm just filling out a couple things, I'll just use the on-screen keyboard and call it a day. So once I'm done copying everything over from my pre-planner, I'll use my routine card, which has my daily, weekly, and even yearly routines. And this is just from my shop, but you don't have to use this, of course. You could just write it down on a piece of paper, get a different one from a different shop. It doesn't really matter. But this just allows me not to have to think about what I need to do for the week, especially for these mundane kind of tasks that I do on a weekly basis anyways. So I like to pull that out. So here I'm just using the Elements app to add in some stickers, and it's really just a way to save little images or import images and you can use these as your stickers app here i'm also showing you how to move things around with the lasso tool you can actually choose if you want to move around text boxes or images or even handwriting and that way if there's something that you don't want to move you can turn that off so you're not like moving everything at once if that makes sense and again how you do that is you basically hit the lasso tool and then you can toggle on text boxes handwriting or images and then that way it'll only select that item and i show you a bit more about the elements tool as as well kind of near the end after I do the rest of my planning because I usually add kind of like the pretty stuff at the end. So then after I've kind of have all my plans in place, I start to add in some more stickers and different things just to make the spread look a bit nicer. So here again, I'm going back into elements and I'm kind of choosing my stickers. I don't use them a lot, but it's just kind of the key essentials. And the ones that I'm using here with the little circles and the icons are actually from uh, my sticker bundle that comes with the GTD digital planner in my shop. Again, I'll link everything down below, but basically it's just some of the essentials that you need and for me if you guys have seen my previous videos 
I'm much more of a functional planner, so I don't like to add too much stuff, but you know, a couple little things makes it look nice. So I really like these icons. So I'm just gonna go through and add these on. So then the other thing that I like to add are these widgets, quote unquote, from my same sticker bundle. And I put widget in quotations because when I was first getting into digital planning and people would call these things widgets, I'd be like, oh, what do they do? Do they like automate something? Does something show up? Does it link to an app? And people were like, no, it's really just like a sticker, like a functional sticker. So I was like, oh, so why do we call them widgets? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, correct me down below if I'm wrong on the interpretation, but that was the understanding that I got. So anyways, I'm going to add this. I'm going to call it a sticker basically for my meal planning. And then what I like to do is take a screenshot of just the white background so I don't have the grid or like the task list area there. And then I just cover up what I don't want in the background or the layout of your insert. That way I can put the sticker on top of it onto this kind of like blank layout. And what's really cool about digital planning is that you can literally change the layouts of your inserts or your digital planner in all these different types of ways just by using stickers to cover things up. So what I'm doing here next is basically creating a sticker from a Google image and you literally just go into Google, search for an image of whatever you want to make a sticker from and then just drag it over into your GoodNotes planner. And the cool thing here is that if you don't want it to be a rectangle, you just click it and then click crop and choose freehand there at the bottom and you can actually draw around the part of the image that you want and that you want to create a sticker of. And then that way it won't be that weird rectangle and it'll be more sticker like. So that's what I've been doing a lot to create little stickers. Then another hack is if you want to use that image over and over again or that sticker, you can basically click on it and put add to elements and it'll add it into that area that we were looking at earlier, which had all my stickers. So you could use the sticker over and over again and it'll just be right there kind of in the app for you already. And then one more cool idea for you, or at least I thought it was cool when I first made it up, is I'm basically using here a little week, days of the week sticker that I created again in that same bundle. And I put it down so that I could create a habit tracker around it basically. And it, the thought just came to me as I was doing the digital planning. I don't know how it came to me, but anyways. So what I'm doing is I'm laying down that um, weekly sticker with the days across the top. And then I'm just gonna basically draw some lines to create a little table and I'm going to use that as both a habit tracker as well as a mood tracker and I think that's just one of the coolest things about digital planning is as you use it more and more you just kind of discover new ways to create things because it's so easy and so functional on um, digital form instead of you know having to have physical stickers or whatever it's kind of hard to create something whereas in a digital form you can make different stickers you can use different things in different ways and that's what I've been really loving about digital planning. So this is kind of what the spread looks like after I've added everything. I hope that you guys found some of these tips useful, especially as a beginner. Like for me, I really still consider myself a beginner because there are so many crazy things people do out there with digital planning that I'm not even coming close to touching. And so if you guys have any good tips, please let me know down below. Also, let me know if you guys enjoy this type of video. It's a little bit different from my other content. I'm pretty terrible at 
editing digital planning videos because I, I don't know I just feel like people make them look so aesthetic and mine's just pretty ugly but <laughs> I tried my best let me know down below what you guys would like to see and thank you guys so much for watching everything again will be linked down below if you're interested and yeah, I'll see you guys next time bye